on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on Thursday, February 9th. L.A. Galaxy get through a preseason game with a 4-1 win over St. Louis. We'll talk about it. Some interesting things there. There's some tidbits. Uh, The Julian Araujo saga, not over. In fact, it just got a ton more difficult for the LA Galaxy to move forward, move past, and uh, move on. So we're going to talk about that. Really crazy quotes just coming out. Some little moves by the LA Galaxy. One going out, one coming in. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about Tyler Boyd as well. He is at Coachella. He is training. They're just waiting for the official announcement for everything. So, we got a lot to get to, a lot to talk about, and to help me do all that, we're glad to have him back. It's Eric, the Portuguese hammer beer. Eric, how's it going, buddy? It's going all right. We're back, baby. Three weeks in a row, and a oh. hot plate of nothing to talk about again. Just, we're, on, we're on a roll. What are we doing? What are <laughs> we doing are we here? <laughs> Why are, are we, we doing this to ourselves? I it, there was a there was a Siskel and Ebert thing and uh, I, I think I yeah. said it to yeah yeah, did you, yeah and yeah. they're like they're like they're like no I understand why you said you didn't want to see this move anymore they they wasted two hours of our life when we could have been doing something else one that's great for this podcast and two it sort of seems like the LA Galaxy in a little ways and I also say that it's not as bad as it looks and you and I were talking yeah. about the starting lineup the starting lineup's not horrible. There's no wing. Did you bring a winger tonight? I was. Yeah, I, it, I didn't bring a winger. I, were it, we supposed to bring our own winger? It was BYOW. B, B, yeah, BYOW is bring your own winger. So hopefully since, everybody brought one. Well, Very good. I, since, I feel like. Since, yeah, go ahead. Go for it. I was going to say, since we don't have tons of news and updates, I mean, we do have news and updates. So we have plenty to talk about. You mentioned Disneyland as a reformed Disneyland adult, even though, you know, it's forced by relocation. Reformed. How was your trip? Yeah, I was going to say reform. <laughs> You're just further away now. That's all. <laughs> Um, it was, it was, I'm still tired. I would like to take a nap right now. Um, yeah. just with, with the, the three, ones, it's, it's, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. I mean, our, so, so my little one, he still naps. Right. And so we were like, Hey, we're going to go in the morning. We'll go for like two, three hours and then we're going to come home and let him nap because if trying to nap there is just a nightmare, yeah. we wanted to like take it, make it as least stressful as we could. So we get there. Of course we got there later than we wanted to. So already you're like, Oh, so now we have two hours in the park instead of like three and a half that we thought we were going to have. Okay. So two and a half hours or whatever. We, we got a couple rides in, we ate some lunch and did or say went back. Um, he got to r- ride Buzz Lightyear, which was his favorite. I saw Larry nice. Morgan not on Twitter there. The Mr. Larry well, Morgan. He, we, as he, Buzz Lightyear. As he was Buzz Lightyear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, strange enough. Uh, I saw him and, and Mrs. Larry Morgan, not on Twitter, um, were both there. So got to say hi to them. Uh, and then we went home, took naps. I took a nap, too. It was a day off. So why not? Let's let's take a little nap. And then hop back in and uh, got back to the park a lot right later around like 345, 4, which was good because it closed at 8 on that night. So then we had about four hours of, of riding things. He had a great time. He went on his favorite ride ever, which is the worst ride in all of Disneyland. And I said it's the worst ride in all of Disneyland to Eric. And what would you say? The Rockets. Yeah, it was the Rockets. The, 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 the Tomorrowland Rockets are, speaking of wasting everyone's time, it's the most overrated experience in Disneyland. I co-sign with you 100% on that. 35-minute wait to ride <laughs> Rockets around in circles for 10 minutes, like that type of thing. So, uh, yeah, it was good, though. He had a great time, and he was screaming as we were leaving, which you, you know is the, the official best. sign of that you had a good time at Disneyland. Yeah. Um, I, that's That was one of my favorite things when we had Disney passes is the people watching and, and just seeing kids throw tantrums and oh, parents having meltdown. arguments. And I've had arguments with the family, and, yeah. you know, negotiating with those, you know, little terrorists on your way out the park. Like it's, 
it's when you're in it, it hurts, but it's the best to watch from the outside. Yeah. Mr. Provino nailed it, by the way. The rockets were a ride worth riding when they were on top of the people mover, which gave it the extra height. And then you were really felt like you were up there when it's just in the middle of Tomorrowland. I yeah. could do a whole podcast just on like Tomorrowland <laughs> and some of the redos that have happened and why it wasn't a good thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it was it was it was one of those, we had a great time. He cried when we left. What else? Do you know, my mom goes, hey, do you remember that time I had to peel your hands off like one of the ropes in order to get you to go home? I'm like, I do not remember that. Do not think that happened. But she does. She yeah. does. Yeah, Say, yeah. Seeing seeing the magic through a child's eyes at Disneyland, yeah. nothing beats it. It's great. It's great. Now yeah. now he's brought out the map. He took a map home with him, so he's bringing out the map, pointing out all the places that we have to go to again. So I'm, I'm which I'm in for. I'm like good because yeah. we did not ride all the things we needed to ride. We right, had, so, yeah, yeah. Keep those super chats coming because you'll need it if you want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fun. Uh, $5 Super Chat from Marvin. Uh, just wanted to say thanks for another dope preseason episode, fellas. Way too early to, to, to figure this one out, Marvin. I think <laughs> I think, I think think you went too early. Um, Shout well, out to you, Marvin. Did you? But there is some Disneyland slander. Um, more, more purposely, there is some people mover slander in the chat room. Um, the people mover was the worst Disney ride, though. Hard disagree. Great kinetic energy. Wonderful chill ride. Well, you got to go yeah. through space. You need Mountain. rides like that. You need the cool down. Take the train ride around around the park. Yeah, you need you people need eaters. Like that. You need people eaters too, right? That was one of the things. It wasn't that busy at the park, but because there were a whole bunch of big rides that were closed, it felt busier because you didn't have Haunted Mansion eating people. You didn't have uh, Thunder Mountain was down for a while, so you didn't have that eating people. So anyway, uh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad we wasted at least a good six, seven <laughs> minutes on uh, on Disneyland hey, talk. The galaxy wastes our time. We can waste everyone else's time. Oh man! All right, this Julian Araujo thing freaking crazy i did not wow. this is one of those where like you get taught you think you know everything after covering this team for 15 years and you're like oh it's a transfer and you'll do the whole thing by the way 16 days until the la galaxy kick off at the rose bowl against lafc um you know abandon all ye hopes of uh of uh of a successful early season i think right now i don't even think it's possible should a designated player target be identified for that designated player now to get into camp ahead of this game 16 days is no time two weeks it's gonna take two weeks for the visa to come through (laughs) by the time this happens so if you were thinking oh well they still have time i don't think they do i mean yes there's a possibility you know if it's somebody who maybe doesn't need a visa maybe christian pulisic comes back and that's who they're gonna bring in (laughs) that's 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 that's, is that where our our head is going now landon i don't hate it landon 2.0 i think we've talked about that right so um, like you could do that. Maybe that's fast enough where you could get him in to, to, to play. And he's but, already in form, ready to go. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, coming off injury with the, with those things I hear. Yeah. Zlat, Zlatan is a super sub. I think that might be an option, but that's, that's yeah, there's good. still paperwork to go through there. Yeah. I, I it's funny. You, and you you hit it right on is the players available versus St. Louis FC are the players that are going to be available for your home opener, uh, you know, against LAFC. So it is kind of wild when you think about it in that way. And all this, lack of movement that the LA galaxy is doing. It's concerning. And, and I don't know if, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go on like my, my rant now or, or later, but I don't hate our starting lineup. And so when I, when I see obviously the Klein out of it all and, and people being really down on the club right now and, and being in a bad situation and wanting change at the club, this isn't a, and I've seen some people say that it's a, a wooden spoon team. It's not a wooden spoon team. You know, you look at Chicharito, you look at Ricky Puj, Look at, uh, you know, Mark Delgado and Gaston Brugman in there, Caceres in there. You know, they have professional soccer players on there who are capable. They're not going to stink it up. But where the drop off is, you know, obviously the wingers and then the depth pieces. This isn't a team that is built for a deep run uh, to compete for trophies. And that's that's why, you know, you see a lot of panicking happen and people upset with the current situation. But the starting lineup isn't awful. It's just, no. you know, that that, you know, there's going to be injuries. There's going to be, you know, schedule crunch that's going to happen. And that's what, that's, that's what we're missing. And then obviously starting wingers are also kind of an issue. But I mean, that's the whole thing is like, so you saw the end of the season. You're like, you know, you're only a couple pieces, a couple starting pieces from really having like this, this change, right? Like really getting into maybe an a quote unquote, an elite club. So you needed to get that starting piece. Who was that other starter? Because with Sam Grancier gone, even with Grancier there, it was sort of assumed that there was probably still going to need to be a starter DP played yeah. in this somewhere. And it was probably going to be on the wings and it was probably going to be to push Costa out or push Grancier out. It doesn't change a whole bunch that Grancier left. I just don't think that they were planning on him leaving. So that hurts the depth because he would have been 
good depth, right? It's, it's like that's like a 60 minute or a 30 minute swap off when you think about it. And Costa Costa is not going to be full 90 minutes every single game. So no, that that's that's the part where you, you get concerned. So so but they it's it's almost like they had one job. Right. It, yeah. it was like, it, it kind and of feels that it. way. Yeah. yeah. You knew it in November or October. You yeah. knew what the job was. Yeah. And so that's sort of where the surprising part, is. I understand waiting for the right fit right now and waiting for windows to close and waiting for Tim teams to be out of other options. And, you know, looking at free agents and looking at, you know, something, like, you know, uh, Di Maria perhaps at Juventus is, is that not really happening? So like, are, do you go make a play for that? That is a chance that you could go try to try to possibly pull that off now. But does that solve your problems? Does that, is that it could, the, is, it that, could. that's one of those players, right? Like yeah, that's he, he's one. a game changer. And, and you talk about form day in, day out in the club, that could be the question mark. But like, when you think about big moments in champions league, in world cup, like he's proved, he has it. That's a player with class. Right. That is, you know, you know, form is temporary class is permanent. That's a player with class. And yeah. so you bring him in. And I think that's, especially that's- with, and I know there's, we've talked about this a lot with Costa being almost like a panic by last season and you almost put too much in that because you just wanted someone you're you, you almost need to make one of those moves this season because right. you can't bring someone in the summer. So maybe you're not thrilled about D Maria being the one a, but right now I think he's your one a, he's probably the best available player out there right now yeah. for the galaxy who can make an impact. So yeah, I wouldn't be upset if that was someone who was one of their targets. Can we shout out an excellent scream name, by the way, uh, ACB bananas, liquid lounge. Uh, if you don't know about bananas, liquid lounge, you, you were missing out, man. What, what the liquid lounge was at one point. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar yeah, with the liquid it's a, lounge. it was, it's a bar on, on Avalon. Um, that okay. wasn't, and it was called bananas, liquid lounge. Cause why Good wouldn't stuff. it be called that? The one time I did go there and I think I've told this story whenever John Arnold has been on our podcast or, or maybe whenever I see John is I went with John. Um, and one of our other friend reporters after a game because they're like, hey, let's go have a drink after a game. It was late and the whole deal. So we would go over to Bananas Liquid Lounge um, and there was just a car sitting next to us moving in a strange way. <laughs> and I'm like, Bananas Liquid Lounge, man. It does it to everybody. That's what yeah. it is. That's just, love it's is just, in the air. Love Valentine is in the air. Days around the corner. Yeah, yeah absolutely. By the way, uh, Bananas Liquid Lounge <laughs> yeah, says Klein Out is not a reflection of the 2023 lineup. It's of the long-term performance of the team. And I think we all, we all know that. We agree with that, but I think some people, there is... I've seen that getting twisted a little bit. I think there are some people who's who feel that this year will not be a good year because of Klein. And to a to a degree, I agree with that because they've put themselves in a hole with no wingers and not having not a, being a summer transfer, uh, not having luxury and being a, a destination for players to land. So I, I get that to a degree, but you know, starting lineup, uh, I still feel it's know, okay. It, it's, I, it's, it's it's actually it's passable, it's, but well, it's not going to make a deep run. And I've been watching sort of some people are coming out with predictions for Western conferences and they have the LA Galaxy. I mean, looking at where the Galaxy finished last year and sort of the momentum, you can see again, I, but I need those pieces. I can't tell you like people, where do you think the Galaxy are going? I don't know right now because it's, it's an incomplete team. Um, So that's sort of where we sit. But here's the thing that has really changed things and has made the LA Galaxy right now. You can't say that they're a better starting uh, team because Julian Araujo is not going to be on, looks yeah. like not going to be on that starting team anymore. Now, uh, really crazy quotes came out today. And then there's even crazier quotes that came out just before um, I was ready to to come on the air. So I'll get that. Uh, Fabrizio, Fabrizio, Fabrizio Romano uh, says uh, Barca director Al- Almani um, on Julian Araujo deal. We have been following Julian Araujo for a long time. We've sent an appeal to uh, Cass regarding his case. If it's going to be rejected, Araujo will play five months elsewhere and then join Barca at Athletic, which is the Barca B um, s- side of things. And that's that's sort of where it is. This was interesting this morning, which I said, hey, this is great news for Julian Araujo, but it is and it isn't because now we have new reporting that just came out from my good friend Jeff Carlisle at ESPN. Um, and I'll read some of that and literally didn't have time to pull quotes from it because I read it about 10 minutes before we came on the air. Um, basically, they start talking about the saga and the whole thing, trying to figure it out. Um, this is, uh, they said we wanted them for the second time. This is what Barcelona was saying. We wanted them for the second team. We want him and we'll look for a solution via the court of arbitration for sport, which is what CAS is, CAS. Uh, he can play in another team for five months, then join us. Uh, It's then Greg Vanny is quoted in this piece. The transfer of Julian Araujo to Barcelona went through. That was all executed upon. The transfer wasn't contingent upon registration or anything like that. So he's their player. 
Unfortunately, for the 18 seconds, he did not get registered in time. Let's talk about there's two things that have happened here. Or there's two, yeah, there's two pieces that are supposed to have happened, right? You have the transfer, which is transferring one player from one team to another team. And then there is the registration of that player in order to be able to play in the league that they are in with the team that they have been transferred to. The transfer, if you if you read Greg Vanny, he says that went through. If that means that it went through, that means the LA Galaxy are getting their $4 million. Um, and Julian Araujo is a Barcelona player, right? But what happened was, and what was late, was the registration or getting Julian Araujo registered with Barca B in order to be able to play in the season and therefore be able to, to be, like be part of the you know, game day rosters. And... That's what didn't go through or was 18 seconds late or there was a computer error and Cass is going to somehow overturn. I, Cass is going to have a very, unless FIFA completely ignored a computer error that can be very easily proven, there's zero chance uh, the the, the uh, court of arbitration of sports is going to do anything, yeah. right? So that's... The, it's that's, not a matter of bending the rules. So just to kind of restate, <laughs> again, the deal went through, yes. but the registration... Did not. And, I, and I've seen people say, well, and very going back to the beginning, it's this is great for for Julian. He's getting that chance, getting that opportunity bad for the galaxy because, you know, we're losing, you know, a starting defender. I think this is the worst scenario, worst case scenario for both parties. Yes, I think correct. this is obviously bad for the L.A. Galaxy because they're losing out on the starter. And it's bad for Julian Araujo as well, because this now puts him in limbo. Because that registration failed to go through, he's not going to have a crack at that Barcelona first team between now and the end of the season, you know, in May. And so he's going to miss that chance. Yes, of course, he could play elsewhere. They can loan him out somewhere else. He could play with Barca B. Um, but but he loses that opportunity to be in that floater range. Now, the, the, the Barca director did say, you know, I didn't, I didn't understand the hype uh, or the buzz following, you know, Julian. He was always going to be uh, a Barca athletic player. So it, it seems like from his perspective that it was always going to be Barca B. But we talked about it. It's about... Playing for that opportunity, injuries yeah. happen, things happen, and that's the part that sucks because he's not going to be able to go through. So, to me, it feels like it's the worst case scenario because right now it's in limbo. And and we were talking about this off air. The Galaxy are now who were in support of Julian and wanting to loan him and giving him that opportunity. Now it's actually not in their best interest to get him back because the deal went through. The money you like, it's like they, got no, their give, it's the they should million. get their like, four million. Yeah, yeah. All right, you figure it out. It's on your end now. You didn't register him. We got our money, and we're, we're going to move forward from here. We're going to cut ties, and that's that's <laughs> it's not that's in the be- galaxy's best interest because now if you go to try to get him on a loan back, now there's okay. Well, what are you going to pay Barca now to get to loan him back? Because you know, you know, if you want him for if you, you know six months or five months, you're going to need to pay Barca some fee or lower whatever that price, and it's going to cut into it. So it just becomes it just it just becomes messy on on all sides because now a player that they were supporting and trying to do best by him. It's almost like now they're, <laughs> they have to say, oh, well, you're not our player anymore. We're going to disregard you and not, not necessarily work towards your best interest. So right, it just right. feels real, real messy, real sloppy. It's ugly, ugly situation. Um, and there's more to this too, because there are people in the chat rooms, right? Hey, loan them back to the LA galaxy. And that was, I assumed something that could happen, but Vanny is saying, and he's probably correct. That gets messy. That gets really messy because no, the galaxy we don't get messy. Miami no, no, messy. no. Yeah, me, Miami gets messy. Um, <laughs> but but you you have an issue now where Julian was a U twenty two player. He's no longer a U twenty two player because he got transferred. He is now not part of the roster. So if he comes back, it's unlikely you can put him back in that U twenty two spot. So that means his salary will hit a cap, and the LA Galaxy will have to factor that in. Even if it's for free, I imagine there's still issues with how he gets brought back in, under what mechanism, and things. Now. It seems likely that there's no ITC that has to be issued because even though he's a Barcelona player, he hasn't been transferred or registered with another team. And so technically he doesn't need an ITC to play for the LA Galaxy. So they could loan him back. Um, But I mean, and and also MLS has an open window right now, right? So technically Julian Rajo is not is not on the LA Galaxy anymore. He's. He's coming. The back. registration he, didn't go through in that league because it's closed. The registration right. is not closed in MLS, so that so, is 
a tick mark in the on the side of the LA Galaxy. Here's here's the here's the the quotes. Um, you know, basically said they asked you know Greg Vanny said, well, you know, is there a possibility of of uh, or Jeff Carlyle asked Greg Vanny if there's a possibility of him coming back on loan. He goes, there are some tricky pieces. Said Vanny, we have to continue to consider ourselves moving forward. At the same time, we want to be able to help Jules out and give him the best opportunity to keep moving forward as well. Um, one of the solutions is Araujo could simply train with Barcelona for the next five months. Um, and, and that's one thing he could do, or he could be loaned elsewhere, but Araujo must play the waiting game until this is resolved one way or another. Again, go to, uh, Jeff Carlisle on ESPN. He has that, uh, Vanny said Araujo is impatient, but he understands that there's a process. He doesn't want to be missing days of training. He wants to be playing games and he just wants resolution. So yeah, I don't wish that purgatory on anybody. Like that's got to be eighteen seconds for being for able to yeah. to be in Barcelona and and doing that and and without any issues and then a clear path for the Galaxy. We talked about it though. The Galaxy don't have a clear path for them right now either. They don't know whether Julian Araujo is coming back on loan and how they have to figure that out. Um, and maybe they can't. Maybe they're like, it doesn't make any sense to us. Yeah. But I but I will say, Julian goes. Julian doesn't go. The interest is there in him from other clubs. So you need to start backfilling that role immediately yeah like if he stays great and you have two right two starting level right backs hey great good for you you have that luxury of doing that but if, if he leaves you obviously need to replenish that role and if he doesn't leave now he's going to leave soon and so you need to fill that role as soon as possible so it still becomes a high position of need yeah um you know uh julian is not able to train with the club right now because he's not an la galaxy player he has to train off to the side and tries to keep himself busy uh i don't know and i imagine he didn't go to coachella um because there's nothing for him to do there except for training and he can train at dignity hill sports park if he needs to train so there's probably no reason to go out there um so that's a that's another part of this the bottom line is now the la galaxy have a right back i mean after hearing all this stuff and i wouldn't have said this early this morning uh, but I'm saying it right now. The LA Galaxy have a right back problem. You know, Kelvin Leardam is now the starting right back. And that's it. That's where you're at. And there's really no backup now. And do um, you have his minutes from last year? He had very limited minutes. Yeah, he really I played I, a I lot of games. I don't. But I'm sure somebody in the yeah. chat room can pull up uh, Kelvin Leardam. But yeah, Julian Araujo is going to play 90 minutes every game. Yeah. You know, that's one of those things. And, and Kelvin was sort of brought in to be that backup. And I don't know that he is capable of doing the start he's going to start well, i would imagine here relatively yeah. you know in the relatively. but the, the point i'm making with that is he was brought in to be the backup but he wasn't even a backup last year he he really hardly saw time on the field so that's that's the part that makes you nervous we don't know what kelvin lerdem can do yeah, and we know he's you know plays for his national team he was gone on a lot of trips last year with that you know shown ability in the past but now we don't with we don't know the with consistency what we're going to have at that right back position it is uh, it's it really is sort of worst case scenario because now the LA Galaxy still have to find a replacement for Julian Araujo. They have to find a replacement for Sam Grantier, although Tyler Boyd and we can talk about Tyler Boyd right now. Tyler Boyd was they were at Greg Vanny was asked about Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is training with the LA Galaxy right now. They're waiting, I think, for the official um, go ahead. I would imagine that they want to get him playing time coming up on Sunday for the game uh, on, on Sunday morning. Um, and if that's the case, expect the LA Galaxy to announce him on a Friday. I would think that announcing him on a Friday isn't isn't where you want to announce a, a semi decent signing. But but you want to see him on the field. But and, you want to see him on the field. And that's kind of the irony of us, uh, you know, moaning a little bit about, hey, why are they playing these closed door scrimmages and not sharing these, re you know, releasing information about the scrimmages going on? Well, the benefit of having a closed door scrimmage and not releasing that information is when you get a player like Tyler Bowler. Boyd and maybe he goes on the field and plays a few minutes and you don't necessarily need to advertise that uh, then that's kind of the benefit but when you're at Coachella Valley Invitational and there are fans there and people watching then you can't play those games so that they kind of us you know fans being able to watch the games actually kind of bites the galaxy in, in the back end for for not having not being able to kind of be a little uh, you know facetious with Tyler Boyd because right. we know a lot of a lot of clubs do it and they do it all the time but yeah. You know, Tyler Boyd, that, that's that's it. That's all we got. That's kind of my frustration is two weeks ago we had Damian Calhoun on here, you know, talk to Vanny, said reinforcements are coming. Last week we had Alex Ruiz talk to Vanny, said signings are coming. Right. We got Eric Zavaleta as the only official player hey, who crossed hey, the don't, line. Don't you dare be time. skipping ahead. Don't you dare be <laughs> skipping ahead in this this news pack show we have. Uh, by the way, Alex says Leardam last played for the Galaxy. Alex is in our uh, chat room. Alex Ruiz. Oh, what a perfect, uh, when I ask for a number, what a perfect person to have in the chat. Right, that's awesome. Right. So uh, Alex said uh, that Leardam last played for the Galaxy in a 4 2 loss to Sporting Kansas City uh, and then Tolley said 475 
five minutes last year for Leardam. There are your answers. So that's the, the last time he played for the Galaxy was in August, uh, and then which is coming around. By the way, it feels I feel like we're closer <laughs> to August yeah. than we are to anything Probably. else, right? Um, so uh, that's that's when he last played. That's that's interesting there. Um, but Tyler Boyd thing is is interesting as well. I basically um, and speaking and asking some questions, and I won't use this person's name because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Um, but basically, uh, it sounds like the announcement is coming with Tyler Boyd. It's just they were waiting on something from his old club. And yes, he's a free agent. Um, but sometimes I would imagine there still has to be some sort of sign off or basically like, hey, we were the last club. It was us like, you know, that type of thing and sign it. And his last club is in Turkey. And yeah. they're not exactly in the best position situation to, to, yeah, to the, all the, pa- you know, oh. paperwork of a free agent player who's on the way out. is probably not the highest of priorities. I but mean, I, I also yeah. wanted to say that I brought up that point. Uh, of, you know, not to disparage or critique our, our guests and reporters, but it's to say that the Galaxy don't only look bad for their inability to bring in players. They're now making reporters like yourself and Alex and Damien, they're making them look bad because they're the conduit to the fan base. They're saying, hey, we've been told there's people coming and then no one shows up and they're like, hey, the, you know, now they're making, <laughs> you know, pl- people like yourself look bad. So making them look silly. So it's like it's bad enough they run around with the cloak of secrecy, uh, you know, with everything they do and not announcing you know what Klein's doing and now it looks like they're being dishonest so they're you know secretive dishonest right you know maybe throw in the cheating scandal throw in some other allegations who've been levied to front office members so now we're dealing we're spending our free time on a thursday evening wasting you know talking about a group of liars crooks cheats like <laughs> what are we doing what, uh, what's i happening? don't know it just I don't a, know. it's a bad look on the club right now it, yeah it doesn't feel that way right it doesn't feel good it doesn't by the way uh la galaxy X outsider uh five uh five dollar super chat blah 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 Hashtag Tam for Cuevas. Uh, there you back, go. Please. See, bring him back. Uh, I, I like it. Just just go. Why not? Why not? It sounds good to me. So um, that's something that's sort of going on. And by the way, shout out to Mike Gray, who's also uh, in the in the chat room. Mike Gray had some good news, uh, good breaking news for everybody. It's not news that you like to hear. But the reason the L.A. Galaxy aren't streaming any of the games um, is because of the Apple TV agreement. Apple TV basically says we own all the content and we will decide what gets streamed and doesn't get streamed. So the reason that the LA Galaxy aren't streaming the games from Dignity Health Sports Park or the games from Coachella is because Apple says, well, we own them and you can't stream them. Um, this is, and I think I think Kevin and I talked a little bit about it on Monday. This is what happens whenever you have the media giant in the world dealing with MLS, which is if you're MLS, you should have done a better job of making the case. That, Zach, I, I want to call BS on that a little bit. Like you have the rights to MLS. So now because you have the rights, you, MLS can't show games like you can't. Yes. I mean, but, a, but that's why if you pay, if you pay $2.5 billion over 10 years, yes, that's, that's what they're but, saying. But the, but, but the bottom line but that is that can be worked out. Yeah. That, that yes. should have been part of the discussion. Preseason wasn't part of the discussion at all. Well, well I that's imagine, weird. I imagine that preseason is going to be part of the discussion. Like next year, I imagine all, I, what do you want to bet? All the preseason games are streamed. It's on Apple TV, the whole deal, but Apple TV is not set up yet. Right. So this could have been one of those things like, yeah, listen, we know you're going to do preseason, but how about you let us like, we'll even run ads for you. Like, the whole time like you know the the why don't you let us stream some of these games because it's making us look bad it's making the whole league look bad right now um so this is going to be one of the cases where apple um is tone deaf to what mls fans expect from the teams and what they expect in coverage because let's be honest eric uh, as mls fans we you know people expect that you're going to stream games that you're going to be accessible for scrimmages that you're going to provide as much content as possible because they're such a niche sport that hasn't, you know, like they've been over the years tried and tried to to drum up the excitement for the offseason. I honestly think, you know, you talked about some of the some of the um, sort of misgivings about people who are upset about watching, not, not about the team and where it's at. I think not seeing them play so far and not being stream games, I think that leads to this too. It's like, well, if I can't see it, then, you know, yes, the Galaxy won 4-1. I'll, I look at the against highlights. St. Louis. I, yeah, yeah, against St. Louis, an expansion team. But I look at the highlights and I go, there weren't any good, there were very few good goals in that game. I don't know if there was a good goal in that game, yeah. right? And it wasn't pretty. They were, they were sloppy, sloppy it was goals. preseason goals. Messy and sloppiness. Yeah, which, which is bound to happen. But, but I think just, just going to, to this Apple situation, they, they, they had an opportunity here where this could have been their testing ground. The, the galaxy knew, you know, that this is going to be something that's happening. And so that's, that's just the part that it, it's unfortunate that they didn't, they didn't anticipate that this is going to be, you know, something that people want to see and, and want to be a part of it's, And to the point of transparency and running around with this 
cloak of secrecy, like say, Hey, this year's preseason games will not be streamed as we are building our intro. Like just make a statement. And yeah, instead why, of everyone just guessing and speculating, why does why Mike have this? to, why does yeah. Mike have to find it? It's like, why would, it's not, why, it's by not the Mike's way, job good, to break yeah. that news. Yeah. Good, good job. Good Mike, on by him way. for doing yeah. it. But yeah. That you shouldn't have been the spokesperson for the LA Galaxy about why the games weren't being streamed. And quite honestly, you can sit there and I say, you know, we called them out and said, you know, that's not cool. You should stream the games. Like, why would you not stream the games? And, you know, people, there were a lot of people who were like, oh, this is underhanded by the LA Galaxy. The supporters aren't going to show up. They're not going to stream the games. They're not going to make it. And it's not that way. And again, being above board would have been fine. Right. I asked about streaming and whether things would be streamed. They had the opportunity to, to tell me this is why. And they didn't. Um, so it's like, it just, it, that's, it just, that's what I'm saying. Just say it. Just, if Klein's your president, say he's your president, you know, make a statement. If, shout if it from you the can't rooftops. stream games, say you can't stream games because of X. Like it's just, it's, it's, that's, that's why people are upset. That's yeah. why you have fans in this doing the things they're doing right now because of, of, of that situation. Well, we talked about this on Monday and I just want to close the loop on this. Carlos Harvey was over with Phoenix, uh, training and the USL. Uh, and I, we were trying to find out whether or not it, they were, it was a permanent deal or a loan deal or however that was going to go around. We now know it's a permanent deal with a sell on fee. The LA galaxy have transferred, uh, Carlos Harvey to Phoenix rising in the USL. Uh, there is, like I said, a small sell on fee for that, but that's interesting. Whenever you realize that the LA galaxy bought him from, I think Taro FC, that he got a green card and was able to come into the country as a, as a domestic player. So there were a lot of things that were working for, for Carlos Harvey. And now I guess not, uh, yeah. they, I, what did Greg Vanny see in the off season or, or what did he see in the, in, you know, the end of last year that said no moss for, for Carlos Harvey. Yeah. It, it's, it's, he's one of those where the midfield is crowded. The center hit the positions where he play is not, it's not like he was going to get a big crack. So I, I see the, the opportunity for him to go elsewhere. So, it's it's un again I keep using using that same word over and over again. It's unfortunate, but I I, I didn't see, Carlos Harvey was not the future of the LA Galaxy and it was not going to make or break this season. Right. So it makes sense to see him go. And with the MLS Next Pro situation, like that wasn't going to be an option viable option for for him as well. So it makes sense that he was over there. But the funny thing about him going to uh, Phoenix Rising is when you deal with other USL clubs who are professional soccer teams they were wondering who's the man in the red hat. So like then now you have other fan bases trying to speculate, doing their own version of what we were doing with Tyler Boyd, figuring right. out who's this person who's at training. And they were trying to figure out, you know, where Carlos, who this person was. And it was determined that it was Carlos Harvey. And then once they figured that out, then the galaxy announced, it's like, well, if the galaxy knew he was going over there again, going back to my running theme, why couldn't they have just announced we're sending him to, you know, Phoenix rising, like it's done. Or maybe those, th it was one of those things in the works and maybe, Phoenix, if we want to give them benefit of the doubt, Phoenix Rising just got ahead of their ahead of their skis and, and released the picture before they were supposed to. But it just felt like it was done. Oh no, Phoenix has a picture of Carlos Harvey there. We better announce that he went. It's just it, it seems like they're very reactionary. In, well, well, and in quite response. honestly, like I asked about it and then didn't get. Then there's a press release on it. It's yeah. like okay, well, you could have just told me whenever I asked because <laughs> that was that that would have solved that problem yeah. too. Like the whole deal. Just it's just interesting. Um, then the other part of this is uh, Eric Zavaleta. We talked about. I even said I doubt there might not even be an official announcement for Eric Zavaleta. It might just be one of those things because Greg Vanny talked about him. He was listed on like the preseason roster as a as a contracted player. Like all these things already told us that that Eric Zavaleta was a part of the LA Galaxy, and yet there was no announcement on it. So um, re-signed to a two year contract through the end of twenty twenty four. I love when people get upset about Eric Zavaleta being on like senior minimum and taking up some some you know garbage minutes for the most part um in that Zavaleta made six appearances five starts across all competitions in his first season with the LA Galaxy in 2022 uh that's all you need to know all right so um yeah he's there and it was a two-year deal Eric. yeah it was, it's it's great whatever it's fine I have zero issues with it um so a uh, five dollar super chat from Gary by the way thanks Gary we appreciate that um so that's in that uh, one of the other pieces of news I thought was fun and exciting and new, uh, Carlos Ruiz, fish himself. Uh, is it, is it, I don't want to say it wrong. Cause I always say it El wrong. Pescadito. That's why. Okay. I was going to say it right. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> one of the greats, one, one of the yeah. best LA galaxy forwards to ever do it. Can, can I tell you uh, that I hated him whenever, uh, cause I started uh, 2008. Uh, I was you were with, his FC Dallas years, right? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't even FC Dallas. It was when he was still with the LA galaxy. 
it was a U.S. men's national team game, um, and it was Guatemala versus the United States. I don't know if it was a qualifier or something like that. 2008, I'm trying to think. Uh, maybe not a qualifier. Maybe it was. There was a game that was played, and, and Carlos Ruiz kicked Tim Howard in the head. Like, when, thing, thing, and I'm like, well, that's, that's re- he's got to go. Right, the whole deal, and I remember my buddy and I were like, "Oh man, he can't, he can't play for the Galaxy after you kicked Tim Howard in the head." And the funny thing was, Bruce Arena traded him like the next day. Like it was, it was That's literally that fast in the whole deal. And so uh, the fish himself uh, away, but he has been called up, called into as a Spanish uh, analyst. Uh, for Apple TV, he will now be on the broadcast. So if you're going to listen to the to some of these games in Spanish, you may get Carlos Ruiz as one of the guys who will be talking to you. So uh, a guy who is uh, is a legend among LA Galaxy fans, um, LA Galaxy, FC Dallas, Toronto FC, Philadelphia Union, DC United. Dude, man, has, he played for a lot of teams. He did. Uh, well, and he was playing for Guatemala, I want to say, up until like 2018 qualifiers. Like yep. he was playing way past when you think he should have been playing and, and banging in goals. I, I want to say his last like CONCACAF World Cup qualifier, like he ended up with a hat trick or something like that. Uh, my Guatemalans in the chat are going to are gonna shout, shout me out, but he, right. he was still banging in goals super, super into the, the late 20 teens. He's, he's the Guatemalan national team. Uh, he's the all-time leading scorer with 68 goals, uh, and that includes a FIFA record 39 goals scored in World Cup qualifications. As well, so uh, Carlos Ruiz is a cool, uh, a cool dude. You might find him there. I thought it was a fun galaxy, uh, galaxy connection. Yeah. yeah, it's it's always fun. But, okay, so now we get into the scrimmage a little bit, right? And, and a preseason game at Coachella. By the way, um, I'm gonna try to try to shout out as I just dropped all my papers on the ground. I don't know if so, you guys probably didn't hear that, but um, maybe maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Well, it's it's funny. I worry about. I'm wearing a lot of people shouted out the anthem jacket. I heard but it. Like I, I, I hear worry it. about. Yeah. <laughs> recording with this thing yeah how bad that sounds on air so uh, congratulations to everyone listening right now carlos by the way um shout out to carlos who who tagged us in some instagram posts and was talking about coachella if you're headed there sunday again i understand some of you are boycotting that's fine i'm planning on going on sunday so uh for real this time uh to cover the la galaxy uh he this is carlos gave a little review of his time at coachella um said pros plenty of quality football intimate seating you can hear everything players and coaches say he said the cons are no shaded seating and very sunny coachella it is very sunny in coachella just in case you didn't know in the desert it's warm out there yeah (laughs) It's it's he said limited food options Uh, if seated on the lower bleachers spectators that are standing along the fence may obstruct the view. Um, and so he made some suggestions and basically said, uh, if you want to make it better, you need to have food trucks. You need to canopy the bleachers. You need to limit standing areas to be behind goals or not of uh, uh, not in front of the seated uh, viewers. Right. So we saw some of that. There was uh, some video uh, and Jalen Neal's mom was was there. And so she was she was taking some pictures and showing some things. There was some video of, of people and fans in the stands. I understand that there was a high school team or a high a couple of high school teams that got there some, some free youths, some yeah, youths on the on, on the some some Utes, premises, yeah. some Utes, um, <laughs> the two Utes, uh, that's a My Cousin Vinny reference, yeah. just in case. I didn't, I didn't, I'm sure you got it. I just, we're, we're old. I just want to make sure everybody, yeah. if you haven't watched that movie, it's still a great movie. Yeah, um, if, you, if you haven't seen Marissa Tomei, still, still got it. Still amazing. She's, she's, <laughs> she's outstanding. Um, and that was one of my favorite movies she ever did. Uh, but uh, the youths were there watching and apparently they got free tickets to come in there. And I know some people were saying, wow, there's a lot of people there. And so s- some of that was them and they were standing up on the fence. And I think uh, Sarah had to go higher up in the state in order to see over top of people and that type of thing. So I just thought it was uh, it was funny to sort of see how that laid out and stuff. I was there last year and we could see sort of, you know, some of the downsides. And I believe I, I agree with Carlos, their lack of su- lack of shade, those types of things. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're going, if you're that, going, bring, bring the big straw hat, Yep. bring the sunscreen. Alex Ruiz is in the chat saying, bring sunscreen if you go. So yeah, layer up, you know, cut, get, just bring your own shade. Long sleeves. You should long wear sleeves. long sleeves. I know it yes, sounds crazy. Yeah, yeah get, wear the long sleeves. Um, that's the, that's the, the trick from the guy who, who went to school in the desert. Um, you know, sort of keep yourself as much covered as possible and that'll help you out. Um, so anyway, they, that I, I was just thinking, the, if you went to the World Cup in Qatar, weren't they giving those, the the robes, the outfits, the Qatari may, yeah. outfit? If you have one of those lying around, that'd be that, perfect. That would be perfect. That would yeah. that would work well for you, I'm sure. Um, just an interesting starting eleven. This is Greg Vanny just rotating things. I mean, pay one, pay no attention to the scores and preseason games it does not matter or, or pay plenty of attention or, to winning or, mls cup baby. or it's the most important thing ever right um but klinsman leardam 
uh, Casares, uh, Mavinga, Gasper, Delgado, Brugman, Puj, Rodriguez, Chicharito, and Jovalich. My favorite game now, though, anytime Greg Vanny puts out a lineup, is try to find the wingers. Like, who's who's playing a winger today? Who's going to be the winger? Uh, in this case, Memo Rodriguez was probably the true winger here, and maybe Jovalich was out wide a little yeah. bit. Uh, to sort of we be... know it's not a four four two when Vanny coaches. So. That's right. It's yeah, maybe four three three. Four through three, something like that. So um, to sort of see how that goes um, and try to figure those out. Now, again, we told you the LA Galaxy couldn't stream anything. So I think they actually did a pretty good job trying to bring you all of the yeah, goals. They had the great updates. Kudos to, to them for sharing all the goals and sharing the information as it happened. So you were able to follow along, which I appreciate. Yes, absolutely. And so um, you got this. Uh, yeah. Mark Delgado got the first goal, I believe, um, of the night for everybody. Uh, again, if you watch these goals, tell me how how clean any of these goals are. Delgado has his first shot blocked and no it falls bangers. right back to him, and then he knocks it into the back of the net, which is which is good um, in a lot of ways. And and Jovalich up there laying things off and and playing things. Chicharito I think was involved in this one as well. Um, so there was that. I'll, I'll let you sort of take a look at the the second goal, um, which is the Jovalich goal, and this is one that had a lot of development out on the the right hand side and was able to switch sides over to the left hand side. I think Chase Gasper was a late run into the box to sort of be able to take that one time into the center. Uh, the big again, not a clean goal because a St. Louis defender literally passes the ball to Raheem Edwards in order for him to continue and lay the ball off to Jovalich. But it was one of the better finishes that yeah. probably you would and- see. And the buildup as well. But you just have to imagine in midseason form, you're not going to be able to get off, sh- get off that many passes in the box that cleanly. So that that's that, that's kind of the issue with that one. Yeah, I would like to point out, by the way, St. Louis scored first, right? Like in the 10th minute, it was one nothing St. Louis. Which uh, that, that, that raised an eyebrow. I was worried. But then they yeah, they figured it out. They, they did. And, and Greg even said afterwards, he was like, you know, once we sort of settled into our positions and sort of got into a better rhythm, he thought that they actually played pretty well. Um, you had Efrain Alvarez, who scored a penalty kick in the 66th minute. Um, no, I'm not going to show you the video of that. Um, instead, I'll just give you the drone view. By the way, shout out to the LA Galaxy for the drone view. I mean, again, co- again they, the, the ability is there. It looks great from this from this vantage point to not to not be able to, you know, see that on a, a larger scale. It's It's unfortunate. Yeah, I was going to say, I, For, I had to scream. If we were doing the word of the week or word of the episode, unfortunate would definitely be your drinking word. I had to uh, I had to screenshot these from, from Twitter, by the way, uh, all videos courtesy of the uh, Galaxy, but I had to screenshot them. And Twitter does this really thing, really bad thing is when it starts playing video, it doesn't give you the high quality. It like has to get into the video. So it looks like the first part of this is like shot on a potato and you can't see the uh, <laughs> you can't see the ball coming through. But trust me, it was there. And again, nice minute finish by uh, by Jovalich there. Uh, Efrain Alvarez uh, buries the penalty kick, which is good. This, listen, anytime people are taking penalty kicks, you, you want them to have confidence and you want Efrain Alvarez uh, especially to have that confidence. And then the final goal uh, to make it 4-1, this one in the uh, 79th minute, uh, it was Efrain Alvarez from Sega Koulibaly. This is the most impressive goal that got scored. It's a good scored. finish. It, it's a good finish. And it's you, the distance covered was a lot too because Efrain Alvarez picks this up just inside the half. Uh, and then he goes one on one, which you have to imagine St. Louis is pressed up at this point, right? Because why else would Efrain Alvarez be one on one at the top of the, you know, at the top of the circle, basically waiting for, you know, waiting for a through ball to come through? But they're pressed up. So then it's one on one, and Alvarez uses his body well. Granted, he's going to his left the whole time. Like, you know, he's going to shoot with his <laughs> left. Like, and that's somebody said, you know, he uses his right foot all the time. And I, I understand where some people would say that. But in this particular case, it's like, if it's a better defender in this particular case, and especially later in the game when you expect that there were probably some some more garbage time minutes guys in there, they're sort of like, okay, this is my chance to show it in the preseason type of thing. It, it wasn't the best. And Alvarez did a good job, good finish. Everything about it was was as it should be. But you have to imagine that's not a goal that gets scored in a regular MLS game. That's that's all I'm saying. And that's not to take anything away from him. He got a brace. I was I was gonna say that I'm gonna I'm gonna go rainbows and butterflies and roses and how you can how you can spin this is four goals in a game and we we saw with Kevin Cabral last season sometimes you just need to get in the knack of visualizing yourself put the ball in the back of the net and you just need to get in that rhythm so Jovalich getting on the score sheet Efra getting two in the in the bag that's it's good that's a good thing they're getting in the habit they're getting the the, the balls are going you're building up the, the confidence so uh, so that's my positive spin on it you know yes it's preseason yes there was there was some you know uncleanliness to it but you're putting balls in the back of the net at the end of the day it's kind of that um uh you know edson buttle hercules gomez argument circa 2010 it's like do you do you want to bring someone else or do you want to bring someone who's 
and hot, has the hot hand of putting all the goals uh, in right now. And again, I love Hercules. So it's just one of those things that, you know, getting <laughs> getting the short end of the stick on some of these these situations. So it, it's it's it just it, I'll, I'll, I, you could take this as a positive spin. And especially with Efren Alvarez after the game saying he wants this to be a breakout year. He's hungry. We've made jokes about, you know, his third third breakout season that we're looking for here. But with the maturity that's coming along, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to hold my breath. But, you know, to see him motivated to make that, you've seen him sprinkled in rumors, seeing Julian Araujo go. Maybe Alvarez is motivated to kind of be on the map, to be that next player, to be scooped up. Yeah, and, and you know, there were rumors about him possibly going to Turkey as well. So um, that was that was an interesting uh, little time. And, and again, like you're right, there, there could be some added motivation. Uh, I believe he actually said after the game, uh, that this needs to be my breakout season. This is yeah. so, so, finally he said we're, it. we're yeah. there. He said it. So this <laughs> is it. There can be no more breakout seasons yeah. after this one. We have drawn the line. This is the demarcation. <laughs> 2023 is the year for Efrain to break out. And if it happens anytime after that, it's too late. Yeah, that's, he, that's, he's not going to be 25 and be in MLS's his 12th year on MLS's 22 under 22. That's, like, that's eventually we're going to run out of runway here. We have we have two shirts I think that we should print. One is um one that just says winger on it, so well, you can wear it to the game and be a winger in case yeah, the LA Galaxy don't have any right. And the other one is uh and in quotation marks, this is my breakout season. Yeah. Um and this all caps. Yep, this is this my my, this is my breakout season. Um those two things are are, are sort of on there. You. The other thing that sort of gets lost in this because there's a lot of changing personnel and I'm looking through all the subs and all the people that got to play. Adam Saldana got some time. Um, Jalen Neal got, you know, some some 30 minutes in there. Eric Zavaleta got 30 minutes in there. Uh, so, you know, sort of going through and, and doing some different things with that. Jalen Neal is going to be the story of this preseason. Uh, he saved the ball off the line, apparently. They kept the, they kept the uh, score close at the time. Um, he is absolutely one of the guys where... You want to talk about a guy who could have a breakout season? It could be. Now, again, preseason, how much do you? And he's young. He's young. But, but he but passes, he, passes, he passes the test. He and, passes and, the eye test, right? And, and, and I'm going to say, if we're wrapping a bow on the Julian Araujo era at the LA Galaxy, it is we're stepping into the Jalen Neal, you know, taking that Julian Araujo spot of the true LA Galaxy fan, you know, underdog rooting for this person, wanting them to succeed, wanting them to to ball out. I think Jalen Neal is taking that torch from Julian Araujo and becoming that next player who, you know, is really going to win the hearts and minds of LA Galaxy fans and, and develop, you know, a strong bond with the fan base. I totally see him sliding into that Julian Araujo role. Uh, the LA Galaxy, let's see, it's Thursday, so the Galaxy train, they will have tomorrow off, so an off day in Palm Springs, if you're looking for them uh, around the Coachella Valley in there, look for <laughs> look for the Galaxy ha- hanging out, playing some golf, doing all the things, laying by the pool, that's what I would do uh, if you're out in the desert, because uh, it, it, I think it's one of the most beautiful places like in the world, if you, if you catch it in the right, when it's not 140 degrees out there, it is a really cool place. I will argue, though, even when it is, that's it's, kind yeah, of the fun of it as well. Yeah, you know, being on the golf course in 108, you know, course lights flowing like water. That's that's not bad either. It, it's not horrible. Yeah. It's not. It's it's a different thing, right? Yeah. It's it's more like you're there to survive it, though. Or yeah. if you're out laying by the pool, the pool and it's super yeah. hot, yeah, you're just like, oh my god, yeah. it's too hot to even do anything. So it's almost like forced relax, relaxing because yeah. you can't do anything. It's too hot. I get it. I desert again. Went to school in the desert. I, I understand. <laughs> uh, when you actually have to operate in that daily, it's not as much fun. Yeah. Um, whenever it goes. So uh, the Galley Galaxy off on Friday. Uh, they'll train on Saturday in the a.m. and then on Sunday that game 10:30 a.m. again against the Portland Timbers, and that is uh, going to be a, a really interesting game. Galaxy have one more game, I think, the next week um, that's still coming up in Coachella, and then they come back basically for that uh, that jersey release party that's going on as well. So, um, yeah, people people are already going after your Coors Light. I know. Light. I had to defend. I'm defending myself in the chat. Yes, Coors Light is not your it's, best It is beer, water. But it in is 108 water. degree yes. heat, you, you that want is it. the one you want. Yeah, yes, that's the I, correct I agree. choice. You don't for, want a heavy stout. Yeah. You don't want a heavy stout. Yeah, no, that's a, it's gross. Yeah. It's too hot. Yeah. No, you need <laughs> you need something that runs through you like water still has a little bit of taste. Correct. I, I agree with you. It's it's a good Thank call. You. It's Thank it's you. safe. It's I was going to say I, I'm going to I'm going to fight I'm going to fight off the chat. I, this is this is my hill to die on. This is Ephra's breakout season and I will say that Coors Light there's a time and a place. There's a time and a place for it. Uh, it, 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 exactly. There's, there's times and places for lots of things. I'm, I'm okay with that as well. Um, no, but that, that's your LA galaxy right now as it sits. I mean, uh, when I go and look at the roster and I added Tyler Boyd to the roster. So, um, let's clear everything out so people can see. Um, 
I'm looking at 25 players right now, which still means the LA Galaxy have five players to sign. Um, the average age, 26. We It was funny. We were talking the Discord a little bit, and you know, you're talking about trying to be competitive year over year, Eric. And I said, you know, it's really hard to be competitive in any league year over year because any sport that you're playing, your 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 product is uh, is is degrading. It is rotting away every single year. You're you're yeah. if you stay exactly the same, your team gets older, right? So things have uh, time marches on. Is that every how that time, works? It yeah. is, and and so, but like that's the thing. It's like you can't keep things together and trying to hold things together for. Uh, emotional values or, or different ways of sort of looking at it. That's the wrong thing to do because your team is going to get older. It's about how you do things when you make those changes and how you constantly renew. Well, we talked about the LA Galaxy. They've sort of been around 26 years old since Greg Vanny got here. He is refreshing. He is renewing. He is doing those things. But you know what we haven't seen yet? And you know what? What? why this number, I think, is skewed, is skewed a little bit? Is we haven't seen the older... The, the Galaxy lost yeah. older players. Correct. They're very and young, yeah. They're, they're very young, and they still went got a little bit older in age, right? Mm-hmm. So then they're going to go out and get the 32-year-old winger that they're probably going to sign, right? And people are going to lose their mind. Not 32, no! Um, or it's a young designated player. The really interesting thing is now the LA Galaxy down to two... U22 players, right? So you could move Jovalich to a TAM spot. You could keep Julian Araujo at a U22. And now you can bring in a quote unquote senior DP in all of this. And you are roster compliant. Or if you're the LA Galaxy, you could go out and get another U22 player to sort of fill in for where Julian Araujo was, right? And then you could keep Jovalich where it's at, keep Efrain Alvarez, but you're going to go out and get a young DP to fill that slot or not fill the slot at all and just leave it open, which would be the biggest mistake ever in the history being you don't have a summer transfer window. But the, the clock, is, that's what I'm saying. The clock is ticking on that move because whatever, ma- what, those are your options. And, but whatever it is, it needs to happen. Like last week, this needs to happen. So it's right. just one of those things where, you know, okay, we need a DP, whether it's a young DP, you know, you need to move, you know, players to Tam and, and out of those situations, like someone needs to come in. You need someone at that caliber to if you know if you don't bring someone who's going to be a game changer then then you're you're really going to be in a bad situation with the with the schedule crunch as it comes later down the line. Di Maria, that's my that's my uh that's that's my guy. I, that's I, where I'm going. I'm, if he's I'm available. Saying. It's one of those things. This is one of those <laughs> and we were joking about this like why don't you just sign, you know, uh, you know, well, the, because there was Delgado in? slander. That's why, yeah. because there was Delgado slander in the discord. I will not stand for Delgado slander. He leads, he, he doesn't lead, but he's like in the top three or four of best MLS midfielders in a lot of different categories. And he is consistently overlooked or undervalued by people who, who I, I think don't pay attention to what he does and what he offers. He, he's the people mover of the LA galaxy. It's you have, Ricky Pouge and Gaston Brugman, and right. you need people. You need rides like the People Mover. You, you need, need midfielders like Mark Delgado to be the third, the third wheel on the tricycle. There, you you need somebody who eats people, and yeah. that is Mark Delgado. He will eat people, and he eats up yardage. He eats up time. Greg Vanny called him like what, like the time creator, right? That he creates time. It's true, and if you watch it, you can see it. And so that's what he does. But the the big deal with him was his partnership with Araujo on the right hand side, allowing Julian Araujo to go forward. By the way, uh, everybody says no on the Coors Light. You're getting you're getting kicked out. Um, <laughs> apparently, I have to I, I have to boycott you from this from this yeah, podcast. I, I, ACB uh, Bananas Liquid Lounge. Right. Big big chat day today. Right. Saying neither a time nor a place for Coors Light or Efra. That's the hill to die on. So fine, fine. Late, if you feel late. that way. I'll live with it. Yeah. Laying the flag uh, on, <laughs> on the hill. I like it. Um, that's, that's good. But no, I mean, you're right. You need the space mountains, right? You need the Indiana Joneses and that's how you're going to eventually make it through. So, um, yeah. Uh, Herb's here. Herb's did here. You, ding dong. Did you want to check? Open the door. Who's here? Oh, it's Herb. It's Herb, Herb here. Bring it. Uh, Bring that de- Ponzi scheme cash. Yeah, I don't know where. I, I, is this one of the things like the feds are going to come after me? And like after we talked about our Ponzi scheme Listen, last Thursday, they're like, you should have known there, something fishy is going on. Yeah, the, the federal government hired a lot of new IRS employees and they are right. monitoring super chats. You're in trouble. I think I think Herb is trying to get me. Yeah. This is he's how I R- get. He's worked with the IRS. I guarantee it. This is how I get canceled. Uh, Herb's in the, he gives a forty dollars super chat. Says, "Hey Josh, hey Hammer, just here to get my name on the podcast." I mean, that's what <laughs> it we're worked. here. M- mission Real, accomplished. <laughs> really, like if you have a birthday message, like the Galaxy do, like you could, we could do those too. If you want a birthday message or something like that, as long as it's G and and you're not trying to trick me into saying something racist or or idiotic, 
I'm I'm all for it because we've seen those too. Yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah, as long as and I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. I will just say anything that kind of pops into it. <laughs> I'm the anchor man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um. So anyway. So yeah. It's uh. It should be a, a, a an interesting time as the galaxy go for it. But I just I don't know what the answer is for them in terms of their timing. Somebody said I'm convinced that the uh, that the season doesn't start until like uh, the home game against Austin, which is like like th- like five or six games into the season. <laughs> I think it's like April 22nd, right? And that's right before the the transfer window closes. Like that's when the season starts for the LA Galaxy. That, Intr- that's a, that's always one of the funniest things to me too. And and the panda made this point uh, on on the show is those three po- when you're making the playoff push at the end of the season. And you're making your move. It's like we need three points here. It's do or die. These are can't lose games or must win games. Those games in in March are worth three points as well. They're worth. You can make a nine point run and bank put those points in your pocket later on. So I understand the sentiment and getting hot, peaking at the right time. You know that's not my slogan. Not not my slogan for a reason. Right. But you know it, it's not a bad idea to start banking those points sometimes. <sighs> I'm. I feel like people are too down on the season. I feel like they've 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 skewed too far, and I understand why. I get it, yeah. I, but but I feel like they're 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 undervaluing what the LA Galaxy have already, and and I still think Greg Vanny is a, a very valuable person to have in the spot. I'm I looking over the former LA Galaxy managers outside of Bruce Arena. I don't know that there would be anybody else I would want to try to navigate this right now. I don't think GBS could have done it. I don't. Dennis Taclosa would have had a good shot at it. Certainly, he's high on my list of people who could have handled a summer transfer ban. Um, I don't. I wouldn't love Siggy Schmidt going after it, quite honestly. I don't think they had enough things established here when he was there. Um, so, yeah, I think this is the guy that you kind of want to to be driving the bus right now. And, and here's my hot take that I'll go the other direction on you here. Greg Vanny, as a head coach, I, I think he's the right guy for the job. Greg Vanny as sporting director, director of soccer operations, I'm not as sold on that. And this is going to be our Klein Out segment of, of the week also, is Chris <laughs> Klein. Brought dis- to you by Herbal Life. <laughs> brought to you by Herb in the chat. <laughs> right. uh, but he, Chris Klein distancing himself from the soccer operations side and say, hey, I'm not the guy who who signs players. I'm not the guy who who is involved with you know signings and stuff like that. That's that's on Vanny or that's on Tacosa. I think that's why not. Shouldn't our club president be involved in signings and being the type of person who has an eye for talent and is able to negotiate? So I think that's a huge faux pas. It's fan service to tell the supporter groups that he's not involved in in the soccer side of things because that that's that's even worse. I mean, like you you're you should the LA Galaxy should have a club president who's involved in the soccer operations, the on the field, you know, happening. So the the fact that he's distancing himself from that. It is a bad move on Klein's part. And with Greg Vanny, you know, a, as a coach, I can see it working and as a motivator. But some of the moves on the players that he's brought in with the Cabrals, uh, you know, Mark Delgado was a hit. Uh, Victor Vasquez work, did his job. But, we, you know, eventually those 2017 Toronto signings, you know, every, they, they we're not getting any younger. Eventually, you're not going to be able to just keep bringing guys from the 2017 Toronto team. And so I don't trust Vanny as much as the scouting side, the sporting director side, bringing players on. I think you need someone who has connections in the soccer world and has you know, worked in other leagues, worked in other countries outside of France, League Two. You know, look at the French League, League League One. There's PSG, there's Marseille, there's uh, you know Lille, there's those top teams. You know, there's teams in you know 12th and 13th. We can go after those players too. We don't have to jump all the way to League Two. So I just I I don't necessarily, you know, I, I like Vanny as the coach, but I think you still need to bring someone in to partner with them on the soccer operations. I don't fully. It's, uh, I'm not fully on board with Vanny as as the, the guy to be bringing in players. It's tough. It's a tough job to do. Like, there's a lot of things that he shouldn't have to worry about on a regular basis, right? And so I, I exactly, I, yeah, he should be able to focus on the field and let that be his role. Yeah, and and I get that. There are guys who have done both and done it well. I mean, Peter Vermees is is certainly that. Bruce Arena was certainly that. I mean, there's fewer and further between. And it's I think, possible, but it's a hard job. 
it's a hard job to do. Uh, absolutely uh, one of those things. By the way, I, I did forget to mention that Remy Cabral got uh, moved over to Colorado Rapids. Uh, they're, they're, you saw that come. Yeah. They're Colorado Rapids uh, two, uh, uh team there as well. So, um, Gabe, nice try, but thank you for the $5 super chat. <laughs> I, uh, I got a chuckle out of it. It, was, it, was, it wasn't bad. Uh, Brendel says, uh, time frame prediction on landing a DP winger before the wind dis- window closes, you all? No. Oh, before the window closes? Yeah. Yeah, That's the window doesn't close until April 24th, I believe. Um, so plenty of time to do that. And yes, I do think that they they will get that and they will get somebody signed. I actually probably expect somebody to be in here, although I was wrong because I would have expected somebody in right around now. Um, I expect somebody in the next three to four weeks, in the next month. I, I know that's a ridiculously <laughs> horrible long timeline and you're like, come on, seriously? Yeah. But eventually the galaxy will sign someone they will i don't know i don't know who it's gonna be Uh, you know it's one of those it's like okay you know let's sort of figure out how how we do that um so yeah so uh that's sort of where we sit on on that one so uh i don't know it's just it's a really interesting time by the way i did get a message from a season ticket member who was a little upset and i can imagine why is the the galaxy dropped prices for season ticket members to go to coachella after season ticket members bought tickets to go to coachella so like some people were mentioning it in the chat like oh you're filling it with high school kids you're giving away tickets i think that's a different thing but this this is a faux pas that's a bad look it is and it's sort of like okay well (laughs) and this happens and we see it happen with la galaxy games in particular you're an early adopter you go there you're the ones they're targeting in order to get your money and then when things don't sell out whenever things are a little bit slower than maybe they thought it was going to be and everything else then all of a sudden the price gets chopped but you're saying over over here spending you know 30 percent more because you were first in there it it doesn't seem fair um, and this is something that they have been guilty of for years, right? But season ticket members, you get season tickets and then you do all this stuff. And then there's a, there's a, a Groupon, a, a Groupon yeah. for, you know, four hot dogs and, uh, <laughs> and a hat, uh, and some galaxy socks for $20, you know? And you're like, well, what, why, why don't I get yeah, the hat? Come, what, where do I get the, the socks? socks weren't in my package. Right? Yeah. I know. I know. So that's. I, and, and, you know, I sort of said, I said, did you talk to your, your ticket rep? And they're like, yeah, I did. And they offered me some other tickets and it's sort of like, well, that doesn't really, that's not really yeah. a, the answer then, either. Right. Then you need to get another Airbnb in Coachella to, for another week and extend your stay. So that's, that's not exactly a one for one. And again, consider the source, the jacket I'm wearing. I could have waited two years you, and got this on, you could have got sale, it at Ross. I had to go straight to our friends at soccer warehouse and order it now because I wanted it now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, certainly we can, we can do a a, a lot of things there. So no, I mean, that's sort of my thing now though, is that it's like, you know, it's okay to keep your eye on these things as they go. It's okay to watch, um, you know, how you spend your money. And, and I I think that, you know, the fans, it's going to be, I think it's ridiculously interesting. What happens if the LA galaxy start winning? What if they win like the first 10 games in a row, their fans are going to come back Is the boycott over. I, I, I having spoken to people, I don't believe that that is true. Um, so th- we sort of say we're in a staring contest. So we sort of say that, you know, we're in these different areas of, 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 you know, how, how the team reacts, how AEG reacts, how supporters react and all those different things. I have no, I don't have a, uh, you know, a play card for this. I don't have a yeah. playbook. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's coming next. It's, it's simply reactionary. I, we talked about things that I've never covered before, like Julian Araujo's transfer saga. That is something I've never covered before. Um, so I don't know how this typically ends. Um, yeah. and to and, be honest, I don't think I've seen that happen with a player as well, but, but I will say I, I have seen some rumblings, excuse me. Of course I sneeze the second that it's my turn yes. to talk, uh, rumblings that like, Oh, well, the, the fan boycott's not going to make a difference that, you know, but not buying the birch is not going to make a difference. You know, again, consider the source right. on, on that here, but I think it's a principled stand. It's not a they're, you know, trying to, you know, get everyone on board. It's, this is how we feel about it. And this is the, our line in the sand that we're drawing. You know, I've made the joke about my, my personal, uh, you know, beef with living spaces is my, you know, personal beef with living spaces going to put them out of business. No, no. but personally for my experiences with them they're it's not where I'm going to go. That, yeah. So you're going to go somewhere the, else. Yeah. The supporter groups, they have made that stance clear that until Klein is out, they are not going to the game so they can wait them out and see if, you know, other people, you know, join in, but I think it's it's more about the principle of the matter. It's not about the size of the movement or you know where it goes. I think it's it's the principle of the matter, and I don't I don't imagine them budging. So that's that's one of those things. We'll we'll see how it plays out, and if if a resolution is made, if 
if there is something that they can offer that the, the supporter groups will be happy to hear, okay, you know, if, if Klein isn't out, here's our, you know, olive branch that they're offering to them. And maybe there is some type of negotiation or right. something else that can make it work. Uh, by the way, first uh, super chat from uh, Yosmar. Uh, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, it says, Josh, if we do well, do you think Klein brushes everything under the rug? If it stays empty, will it ever be addressed? I don't have answers. I wish I did. I, I mean, we can guess. Um, yeah, I think the Galaxy having success certainly puts more pressure on the supporters than it does on the LA Galaxy. The Galaxy struggle, I think there's more pressure on the LA Galaxy than there is on supporters. And it shouldn't matter because, as was pointed out at the beginning of this show, the, the boycott isn't about what's happening in 2023. It's what's been happening over years. Correct. Um, so it shouldn't matter what happens this year, but it will. Everything matters. <laughs> Winning solves a lot of things. Winning will allow things to be brushed under the rug. The LA Galaxy are winning the Supporter Shield, and they're going out there, and they're tearing everybody apart, and Ricky Pooj is the new Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and everything else that sort of goes in. It's going to be difficult for, you know, for one side. It's going to be more difficult for the supporters than, than the other. And listen, again, I say they, they're going to stick to their guns. I don't, I don't think it's changing, right? But so... But to the last part of the question for Yosemar is if it stays empty, will it be ever will it ever be addressed? It will have to be like if it's empty, then Klein's not succeeding in his job of filling, putting butts in those seats. And then it will have that will eventually get there if it keeps staying empty and the atmosphere keeps taking a hit. Eventually, you know, the, the changes are going to have to come because people are going to say, come on, we, we can't keep doing this. We can't keep showing up to an empty stadium. You know, something's going to have to give either with the players joining in and supporting the groups or. Or, or Klein finally resigning and saying, hey, I, I don't want to keep putting the team has an opportunity to make a run. You know, they, they're looking hot and looking at and then it's, we're locking our fans out because of me. You know, maybe he finally kind of grows the spine and the backbone and decides, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away at this point. Uh, I, I like it there. Uh, uh, Potter must says uh, the galaxy would be lucky to win an egg cup and, uh, and E super goes the wood, the wooden spoon is up for grabs though. Well, I don't think you it's... could put the egg and the wooden spoon and have one of those races. You I mean, could. Um... I like, I like, I like Delgado's chances in that. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he, he's very good at those things. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's it. I think that we're going to wrap it up there. The LA galaxy facing off against Portland Timbers coming up at Coachella. Uh, coming in on Sunday, and that's 10.30 a.m. I expect that there will be updates. I will do my best to put updates out there. I, I Like I said, I, I'm as of right now, I'm going. Whether the kid gets sick again and then I can't go again, we'll, we'll see. But for right now, it, it seems likely it'll be out there. I People are saying, hey, I should do the play-by-play like I did last year whenever I went out there. They, I'm, I'm going against like Apple now. That's a little bit of a scarier <laughs> proposition. Say, you should be there with an iPhone saying the name that shall not be named while streaming the game. I think you'll get tackled pretty quickly. That should like, be a fun time. I, I, I literally, you know, Panda's like, oh, we should just say it. And what are they going to do? I'm like, dude, you have the LA Times behind you. What do I have <laughs> behind me? I have like my my fold up bed. That's what's behind me right now. Right. So, yeah, this we'll we'll see. But I will um, I, if if the Galaxy say, hey, come up to me and go, hey, Josh, feel free. Go ahead. You know, you're good. Then I'll do it. But I doubt that that's going to happen. So I will try to provide updates um, from there and just try to uh, figure out what I can do for you guys while I'm out there. And hopefully if I see some of you out there, please come by and say hello. Uh, be happy to do that. We could absolutely do a halftime meetup if you want to. If you're not going to be there and you're boycotting, follow social media and we'll do our best to do it as long as Twitter's still around. Who knows what's going to happen uh, recently. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you can send a 4,000 character tweet to wrap up, wrap up the game. So that should be no, good. Nobody, nobody. Just, uh, <laughs> no. No. And the API, API changes. People are like, what are you going to do? Because there's there's API changes coming for, for Twitter, which is not great because it's a very, very set ecosystem of apps that play off of Twitter and they're going to change the API and that's going to cause all these apps to not do it. And of course, they're giving them lots of time to do it. So we'll see. I have no idea. You know, it's everybody's like, oh, well, you should go over here. And it's like, you know, I have like 10,000 followers on, on the COG on, but, at Galaxy Podcast. It's really hard to transfer that over somewhere else. And I, I've played around with other media sites and, and, and nothing replicates Twitter like Twitter for live sports or for nope. sports in general. Like yep. there's other things for, you know, video games and for, you know, TV shows and podcasts and different things. But as far as sports, the ecosystem, Twitter, there's there's no better place. No one has figured out how to replicate that or to have a better ecosystem for it, which is it's sad. Even, even yeah, as that ecosystem is like slowly killed. Yeah, it's yeah. great. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? We good? No, that's it. We're good. All right. Tell people where they can find you. Let's go. All right. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok at HammerEV9. That's HammerEV and the number nine. 
All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. That's where you can find all of our podcasts right there. And Ramiro, if you know him from our Discord, says that he wants to write for us again. So maybe we'll have some articles up there uh, from him here in the relative future. All right. All right. That's what we got. LA Galaxy, Portland Timbers, Coachella Valley Invitational, 1030 a.m. I should be there. We'll have coverage on our Twitter account at Galaxy Podcast. All right. For Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>